In this short video, we're going to talk about a very important concept. We have looked at it before, and it's about linear combinations. Linear combinations of vectors. So the idea is, if you have a set of k vectors, and you have k scalars, sometimes we use c1, c2, up to ck. Here, we're using x1, x2, up to xk doesn't really matter. We could use other letters as well, but they represent scalars. And the idea is you multiply each of the vectors by a scalar. And these scalars could be any real number. They could be negative, positive. They could be radicals. They could be zero. And then after you scale each vector, you add up the scaled vectors. That's what we call a linear combination. So here's a simple example from R3. We have three vectors, u, v, and w. And if I just take 2 times u plus 3 times v minus 2w, then I'll get a new vector. And so our coefficients here are positive 2, positive 3, and negative 2. So in a linear combination, we always consider that we're doing addition. So even though it says minus 2, we're really adding plus negative 2 times w. Here's a more interesting example. If I'm given two vectors in R4, I'd like to know if a third vector is a linear combination of the given vectors. So I have u and v. Is w a linear combination of u and v? Well, if w is a linear combination of u and v, then I have to be able to find some scalars, x1 and x2, where w is x1 times u plus x2 times v. So let's go ahead and substitute the components for w, u, and v. And from that, I can write the right-hand side as a single vector. And so now what I'd like to do is equate the corresponding coefficients. So I would equate the first coefficient on the left-hand side with the first coefficient on the right-hand side. The second, I'm saying coefficient, but I meant component. The second component on the left-hand side with the second component on the right-hand side, and so on. That gives us a system of equations. I have four equations and two unknowns. Now this system of equations doesn't seem to be too difficult because the third equation is very easy to solve. And I get x2 equals 4. And then I just chose the second equation. I did a substitution. I replaced x2 with 4. And I found x1 equals negative 3. Now I can't just stop here. I need to check to make sure that those values for x1 and x2 satisfy the first equation and also the fourth equation as well. So I'll just do some substitutions. And sure enough, those two values for x1 and x2 uh, satisfy all four equations. And so I can conclude that w is indeed a linear combination of the vectors u and v. Now, an idea related to a linear combination are standard basis vectors. Now, we haven't even defined the word basis yet. Uh, but So we'll just take this as a phrase, standard basis vectors. They are vectors. We use the letter e with a subscript. In Rn, you're going to have n standard basis vectors. And the vector e with the subscript j means it's a vector which has all zeros except in the jth component, which will be 1. So let's look at some examples. So R2, you have the standard basis vectors e1 and e2. e1 has a 1 in the first place. e2 has a 1 in the second place. Otherwise, it's 0. Now, in R2 and R3, we have special names. We use the letter i to represent the same vector as e1, and j to 
vector represent the same vector as E3. Notice that I and J still need to have an arrow above them. Any variable, even our standard uh, basis vectors, uh, have to have an arrow above them. Uh, sometimes, though, for any unit vector, in particular, all of the standard basis vectors are unit vectors, uh, we can use a hat. So it's not necessary, but it's a good way of distinguishing that not only is this letter representing a vector, but it represents a unit vector as a special case. In R3, again, E1 has a 1 in the first place, E2 has a 1 in the second component, and E3 has a 1 in the third component. Another name for E1 is I, another name for E2 is J, and another name for E3 is K. In R4 or higher, we don't have special letters to represent them, so we just say E1, E2, E3, and E4. Now, why are we talking about the standard basis vectors when we have a video about linear combinations? It's because any vector in Rn can be uniquely expressed as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors. And so the coefficients are just the components of the vector. It's a very simple idea. Let's look at an example. So in R4, I have a vector with components negative 2, 12, 32, and 8. So I can write that vector v as negative 2 times e1, 12 times e2, plus 32 times e3, and finally plus 8 times e4. And we can just verify that. Of course, it makes sense because in the first vector, I only have a 1 in the first place, so I'll get only a non-zero component in the, first com in the first component. And the same idea with the second vector. I'll only have a non-zero component in the second component. And when I add all those together, sure enough, I'll get the same vector, v. So I hope you found the linear combination video useful. And we are going to use this idea throughout the course. But coming up soon, we're going to use this for the notion of the span of a set of vectors.